Allison Ellis, Senior Vice President, Regulatory and Government Affairs with Frontier, as Frontier has recently announced plans to invest $100 million to expand their fiber optic network to 100,000 additional homes and businesses in West Virginia in 2023, the largest investment announced by a communications service provider in the state. With us right now is Allison Ellis. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You're on with Rob and Matt and Jonathan. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great to have you with us here. Can you tell us about this rollout, this $100 million expansion in West Virginia, how it's going to take place? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, Frontier is a very familiar name for all of you and your listeners, I'm sure. We've been in the state for a very long time providing uh, voice and broadband services using our copper facilities. And we um, recently uh, announced a goal to reach 10 million locations with fiber to the premises by the end of 2025. In December, we're actually met our halfway mark. And um, uh, West Virginia is kind of a unique state for us because although we operate in 25 states, there are only two states where we have um, a network that essentially covers the entire state. That's West Virginia and Connecticut. So, you know, West Virginia is a place where we, uh, as you mentioned at the top of this segment, um, intend to invest aggressively in order to expand our fiber footprint within the, uh, within the state. And so when I talk about fiber to the premises, just for your listeners, I mean, what that really means is a very high speed, very high uh, reliability connection from our central office to their home. Fiber is really the premier connectivity um, uh, technology available today. It provides super high-speed services, and it's really going to ensure that customers in uh, West Virginia have the connectivity that they need, you know, not only for today and all of the applications that we have today that are high bandwidth like Zoom and Teams and and WebEx, um, but also well into the future. One of the things that was reinforced during the pandemic when students needed to try to learn from home and connect to their schools regularly was that in West Virginia, it's pretty spotty. Uh, At least it was during the pandemic. Will this improve that quickly? Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the pandemic was, you know, obviously a huge impact for everyone. Um, One of the things that was really interesting as an industry and as consumers, we were always focused on the download speed of our connection, right? So, like, how fast could you get your Netflix, um, you know, or your your videos from from the web? What we learned in the pandemic, or which became, you know, really clearer to a lot of people, is that the upload speed is what's really important as well. You need to have a very fast upload speed so that you can get your content up uh, into the web as quickly as possible. That's what makes these interactive applications like um, Teams and, you know, remote schooling, remote work, telehealth services work really well. So, you know, when we're talking about deploying fiber, um, you know, that's going to just, that, that's just going to totally change the experience for users. We, um, as of, you know, just last week or the week before um, on uh, January 30th, we announced 5 gig symmetrical service. So that is 5,000 megabits up, 5,000 megabits down. That's available throughout our fiber footprint. Um, You know, obviously we have other speed tiers, uh, but it just gives you a sense that, you know, we are we're constantly pushing the envelope forward in terms of speed and capability for our connections. So, you know, when I talked about the 10 million, maybe just to emphasize, we started that um, that that uh, investment in West Virginia. I mean, it's been ongoing for some time now. In 2021, we began to really deploy fiber more um, more actively in the state. Uh, you know, as of the end of the year, we passed already 125,000 locations with fiber. Um, so, you know, this year we've, we've got, as you mentioned, 100,000 more planned. So, you know, we're really working um, as quickly as we can to, you know, bring fiber to as many people as possible in the state. The West Virginia legislature and the governor have set aside hundreds of millions of dollars to try to improve Internet access in the state. Is Frontier working at all with the legislature and the governor's office in this project? Yeah, absolutely. So. We announced this 10 million passing goal, you know, early in 2021. This was really 
before there were any of these, um, you know, big state and federal grant programs. So this was all um, investment that was, you know, an expansion that was um, going to be privately financed. And so what we see with the um, grants is we have a really great opportunity to complement what we are doing with our investment and expansion with, you know, some public contribution where that's necessary to reach locations because they're, you know, expensive or very difficult to reach. So, you know, we see this as a way for us to expand beyond that 10 million locations. Um, you know, we've been very involved in West Virginia with your broadband office and with, uh, you know, legislative leaders. We actually participated in one of the last grant rounds and won several grants. Um, and, you know, in your area, in the Eastern Panhandle, we actually um, were selected as a partner for Berkeley County in a public-private partnership where we will uh, jointly apply to the grant, um, the, the West Virginia Broadband Office, to get a grant to bring service to some locations within Berkeley County that are um, high cost and, and unserved and underserved. Matt Miller. As a frontier uh, customer myself right now, Allison, what might I expect with this uh, going on? Is it something that I am going to see someone potentially coming to my house and, and that connection will be different? Or is this more an infrastructure and I will simply notice that the new fiber connection is in place? Well, the answer to that question is kind of all of the above. So what we're doing is an infrastructure overlay. So we're deploying all new fiber infrastructure. So if you have copper DSL service to your house today and you're part of our fiber expansion, you will, you will then have fiber services available to your house so that when you order broadband or voice services, that will be provided to you over a fiber connection. Um, your experience will be totally different than what you have today. Fiber is, as I said, um, very reliable. Our network has a 99.97% reliability um, uh, of reliability. So that means, you know, on average, annually, it only is susceptible to 2.5 hours of downtime. So, you know, it's a very, very robust connection. Um, you'll be able to get, you know, all of the services that you want, have multiple users, multiple devices. You won't notice any, uh, uh, you know, um, service degradation. You know, there, it's not susceptible to congestion the way that copper is. It's not distance sensitive the way copper is. So, you know, copper, the further you are from our central point of aggregation, you know, the slower your connection becomes. That's not the case with fiber. You can be, you know, a thousand feet from our central office or you can be 10,000 feet from our central office. You're going to get the same level of connectivity. So, you know, we're super excited about this because, um, you know, we recognize we've had some service quality, um, you know, challenges in West Virginia. Our, our network has not been able to keep up with people's um, broadband demand historically, but fiber is totally changing that and fiber is going to be able to keep up with demand well into the future. I mean, the networks that we're, you know, I mentioned we, we've launched five gigabit symmetrical. I mean, nobody is really purchasing that from us. Um, you know, maybe some some users that are doing, you know, really sophisticated applications at home, you know, a, a lot of video editing or something like that. But, you know, it was important for us to introduce this into the market because we really wanted to communicate to the communities that we're serving that we're providing the connectivity that they need for tomorrow, not for yesterday or for, di for today, but well into the, you know, into the future. Do you have, um, pardon me, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I just, you, you had said, would people see, you know, I just wanted to follow up. You said, would people see, um, you know, people in, the, in, the, in their neighborhoods? And the mm -hmm. answer is yes. We, we do our deployment in two ways. We do aerial deployment, which is, you know, we, we attach to the poles. And we also do underground where we have the capability to do that. And so... Um, when we go into a community, you know, in advance, we meet with community leaders. We tell them that, you know, w what we're planning to do. We then go into the community and, and do, like, door hangers to let people know that fiber construction is coming. 
we do that, you know, at the uh, simultaneously with, you know, construction ongoing. And then, of course, we're also uh, sending out notices into the market to advise people that the service is going to become available to them and, of course, hoping that they will sign up for our service. So, you know, there's some marketing uh, involved as well. I was just simply going to ask a, a, a moment ago, is there some sort of an interactive map or a way that people may know that you are in their area and or coming to their area as part of your progression as you, you make these adjustments? Yes, absolutely. So we have, um, we, you know, just in January, we launched on our website at uh, www.frontier.com a um, Where's My Fiber feature. So customers can go in and um, they can enter their address, and that will allow them to see, you know, when an expected date for, um, uh, you know, fiber availability is in their community. And, you know, if it, if it, is not something that's planned in the near term such that it will show up there. They can, they can also use that tool to register their interest. Um, so, you know, sign up and have us uh, provide future updates to them. Jonathan Bodwell. Well, you answered a lot of my questions. I'm, I'm a former Frontier customer. My business had Frontier Internet, and it was up, it was down, and f they came out a few times, and the guy basically said, look, you're too far away from a hub and uh, you're not gonna, you know, there's, there's really nothing we can do to make it better. So, I, I mean, I did switch to your competitor to Comcast. Um, the fiber thing, I think, is gonna be a game changer all over the state for you because, you know, fast internet's what we need. Now, are you guys looking to do something similar to what Verizon does with their Fios? Are you guys gonna have a TV service? Are you gonna, are you gonna compete with uh, Comcast and the, the, the satellite providers? I mean, putting $100 million into it, I. I would think it'd probably be a logical progression. Yeah, well, first off, uh, when we deploy fiber into your area, I'm 100% sure that we will win you back. Because <laughs> I like that, Allison. <laughs> That's good. Uh, you know, our service is really, um, you know, is really a, a superior product offering than our competitors. So, um, you know, we'll be excited to welcome you back when that time comes. Um, in terms of video services, so... You know, what we, what the market, just like people moved from um, landline phones to wireless phones when they became available, you know, very in, en masse. I mean, at this point, you know, in the state of West Virginia, we have um, less than 8% of the, of the voice market, right? So that, a uh, residential voice market. So that means, you know, customers who have the option to have either a competitor for voice or mobile services for voice, you know, they're selecting that. Um, we see the same trend in the video space. So, you know, fewer and fewer customers are um, watching what we would call linear video, you know, that what you would consider your typical cable service or, you know, even a satellite um, TV service. Uh, you probably know this from your own experience. I mean, customers are um, selecting their content and watching it through streaming services to a higher and higher degree. So whether that's um, Amazon Prime or Hulu or Netflix or Paramount or Discovery, I mean, you probably have, you know, if you have kids in your house, you know, quite a number of subscriptions to these kinds of um, services. Yeah, my kids have so, signed up for a lot of them, even ones I've yeah. never heard of. I just see it on the credit card bill and wonder. <laughs> that's, that's right. And you're like, what is this $4.99 for? But, um, yeah, so we, we do have a partnership with YouTube TV. We do offer that as part of our service. We have a lot of customers who are signing up for that. You know, YouTube TV has a um, – gives you the same experience in terms of, you know, a lot of channel choice, uh, you know, uh, sporting events, um, you know, and other content. So customers will be getting their video in a slightly different way, but it will, it will be a set, you know, it will be the video experience that they want. With five, with five up and five down, you'll definitely get a good experience. Allison Ellis oh, yeah. is our guest, Frontier Senior Vice President of Regulatory and Government Affairs. They're putting $100 million into West Virginia for fiber uh, um, optic cable and such and uh, to improve the Internet experience. Allison, on our Facebook comment page, which, which I would tell you is a cynical bunch to begin with, uh, they, are, they are not disappointing today. There are a lot of folks who are skeptical of Frontier and the improvements 
you're talking about from previous frontier experiences, no doubt with the old copper lines, I would guess. What can you tell these folks so that uh, they might consider trusting frontier once again? Yeah, you know, I understand. I understand that totally. And, um, you know, I have a couple things to say about that. The first is we're a totally new company. We have a totally new board, a totally new senior management team, um, and a very clear vision for the company. It's what we call Building Gigabit America. That's the, you know, initiative to bring fiber to the premises to as many locations in our footprint as quickly as possible. So, you know, the, the experience that many customers have had in the past, you know, have been under different leadership uh, of the company and under a very different um, approach to how we service customers and, um, you know, enhance our network. So that that's number one. Um, you know, number two, I would say is we have communities where, you know, People have been quite skeptical of us, and then we deploy fiber, and it's really amazing. I mean, we see within 60 days the view of Frontier just doing a 180 because the service is just amazing. And I actually have a customer in um, West Virginia who signed up for our gig service, so that's, you know, 1,000 megabits up, 1,000 megabits down. That service, um, we price that at $69.99 per month. That's an all-in price. It comes with two Eero Pro 6 routers, which are um, routers that use the most advanced Wi-Fi standard and provides a really robust, really good um, in-home Wi-Fi signal. So, you know, thinking about not having dead spaces or things like that. And uh, this customer said he, he tested his service across the street at his neighbors, and he was still getting a gig symmetrical. So, you know, that that's not going to be everybody's experience, you know, just because of the distance involved in uh, West Virginia between some houses. But, you know, this was a West Virginia customer who was just, just blown away by um, our new service. So, you know, I understand the skepticism. Um, I, I think uh, people's minds will be changed very quickly when they see what our fiber service um, is able to offer them. So you guys are basically going with a go big or go home kind of mentality, down to 8% uh, of the voice. You just, it's either give up on West Virginia or go in and conquer West Virginia and, and give us what we need, which I, I'm glad you guys chose that you know, that tact, that's, we're, we're excited. I mean, I, Hey, you, you get it in my area. I'm switching back. I'm going to give you guys a try 100%. Well, that's great. And, you know, I'd love to hear that. I, I will tell you, we've never given up on uh, West Virginia. So, you know, West Virginia is a really important state to us. As I said, you know, it's one of two states where we essentially serve the entire state. We, you know, have 15,000 employees in the state. So we're, you know, big employer, um, so, you know, I just want to emphasize we've never given up on uh, West Virginia, but you're absolutely right. You know, we're all in on fiber. We're very excited about that. And, um, you know, we know it's a good investment for right. not only the company, but also for, you know, West Virginians. Matt Miller. As far as the price point, um, you know, making such a large investment and bringing in um, that the fiber that's going to provide such a great experience for those who who need that great upload speed and so forth, where will you fit in that that price point? Yeah, so we have, um, you know, we have very attractive prices, and they're available for customers to look at at, you know, www.frontier.com. We have two two things that I would say. Um, when we developed this $69.99 uh, um, gig service offer, we also have a 500 over 500, a two gig service, and a five gig service. Um, but when we developed that, we did that very intentionally and in response to consumers, um, you know, our research of consumers. We did a survey of our customers and we, we um, listened to what they said about what they wanted in their connect uh, from their broadband service provider. So, you know, they were price sensitive. That's why we came up with a very competitive $69.99 um, offer. They wanted an all-in offer. You know, that's why we have the two um, – Hero routers included with no additional fees. They wanted better Wi-Fi performance in home. You know, that's why we did the, um, uh, you know, that's why we selected the Eero Pro 6 router. 
Um, you know, and they, they, they wanted high speed. So, you know, that's why we really focused uh, on the gig, you know, as a, our flagship offer. Um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, we also for um, income eligible customers, so for low income customers, we also participate in what's known as the affordable connectivity plan. And Allison, I, I have to jump in because I've got a break. I've got to take in about 30 seconds here. Can you give me a 10 second summary on how you can sign up for that? For the ACP? Yes. Yeah. So that's a, that, that can get you 100 over 100 service for free. You can call Frontier and we'll help work you through the process. Uh, that the federal government is actually the um, entity that uh, qualifies customers. Allison, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Allison.